it is no surprise that Call of Duty has been on a downward trend ever since Call of Duty goes. And a lot of people will say whatever they want about Call of Duty. Whether, whether it doesn't matter which Call of Duty they played first. That Call of Duty they played first, whether it was called, whether it was Call of Duty 1, 2, 3, COD 4, World at War, or heck, even the current Call of Duty playing now, they will say whatever they will say good things about that Call of Duty, obviously. And you know, no, all, more power to them. I'm not here. I'm not here to. I'm not here to like, destroy like your opinions about your Call of Duty. If you like the Call of Duty that I don't like, that's perfectly fine. That's what. That's what makes us. That's what makes all us all us humans different is because we we think and act differently. But I'm getting I'm getting off topic. Today's video, we are going to be reviewing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 22. Now, if you remember back last year, I did a beta review where I said that Modern Warfare 2 is like you know, wasn't worth it. And I'm trying to think, do I still think that way now? Well, if you've been watching my trailer, then the answer should, should be simple. But I can't assume that everybody here is everybody watching this video is a returning subscriber. So I'm just going to go into this, no holds barred, and just give you my uh, honest, open and honest opinion about Modern Warfare 2. So, let's get into it. First off, we're going to briefly touch on the campaign. Briefly touch on it. So, as of two days ago, August 8th, August 17th, the, we, we just had the Modern Warfare 3 reveal event where we learned about, where we learned that Makarov, the main villain from the, oh, from the OG, from the OG uh, trilogy, is going to be the, return is going to be the villain from Modern Warfare 3. If, if, if that hasn't already been, you know, made clear, obviously. If you, if you played through the campaign of Modern Warfare 2, you know. So, the, we have the beta for Modern Warfare 2, made beta for Modern Warfare 3 in October, with the full game releasing November 10th. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Well, if you remember last year, we had a beta for Modern Warfare 2 in October, and it dropped in November. We'll, we'll, we'll get there, trust me. We'll get there with we'll the multiplayer. But for the campaign, there's nothing much to say. The campaign was good. Cafe for Modern Warfare 20 and Modern Warfare 19 was good. Aside from a few visual and technical problems with Modern Warfare 2's campaign, it was, it was, it was a pretty solid campaign. I have still haven't finished it because those technical problems did get bad with, like, the, my main problem with, like, the, with, like, like the never-ending sun glare that, that happens sometimes. It has, it has carried over into, into, into the final mission, and I can't really see anything if I look for it. So, you know. That's, that's what's kind of holding me back from playing the game, but other than that, campaign was solid. I watched Tim play it when it, when it first came out, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm good, and I'm up on the story, so I, I, I don't know what, I'm, I'll be excited to see how they go at Modern Warfare 3. Next up, let's talk about, let's talk about co-op. Keeping it simple, co-op wasn't that good. It kind of flopped. Just like Modern Warfare 19, just like Modern Warfare 19's co-op mode, it flopped. Now, how that mode flopped co-op mode and Modern Warfare 2 flopped as well. They, I mean, they did introduce raids, and the raids do have, like, exclusive items that you can only get through the raids. So you can unlock Gaz, you can unlock Alex, you can unlock some exclusive camos, especially if you do some of those raids on better. You can get some super cool camos and whatnot, some super cool animated camos. But, again, I just didn't feel compelled enough to do those. I tried them, but I got over it really quickly. Alright, so that's it for camp that's it for co-op. It wasn't that good. And uh yeah, don't if you if, if you were thinking about getting Modern Warfare 2, expecting the co-op to be good, don't don't hold your breath, please hold your breath. Up next is Warzone. Okay, so I already didn't like I didn't like Warzone 1, and Warzone 2 literally did not make me like it at all. The Warzone 2 is a downgrade to a lot to everyone, it's basically Warzone 1 but downgrade. But, well, that's how it felt at the beginning. But now, we're back to how Warzone 1 was with Warzone 2. And that makes you think, why didn't they just do that in the first place? Well, who knows? Who knows? Infi in Infinity Word, well, Infinity Word, that, I don't I have no idea what's up with Infinity Word. Like, what well, here's the thing. When it comes to Infinity Word games, I've never really, like, enjoyed their multiplayer. Like, COD 4, going back to COD 4, though, it does feel good. But I probably will not. I probably will grind it very lightly. Modern Warfare 2 is a Modern Warfare 2. I do enjoy that game a little bit, not too much. Modern Warfare 3 the, is the Infinity War game I enjoy the most. Infinity Warfare was good for the time, but then I realized just how 
you know how weird, how like you know, different it is compared to Treyarch. I guess, I guess because I prefer Treyarch style of. I guess because like if it's not like Sledgehammer or Treyarch, I don't really like it. I, I just don't like how. I just don't like the game philosophy of like Infinity where how they you know how their games are much slower and like you know tightly designed. Whereas like Sledgehammer and Treyarch are more fluid and more loose. You know what I mean? Okay. So moving on to DMZ, which is also a part of Warzone, but I wanted to talk about it separately. Uh DMZ, I had a lot of I I had a lot of like I was really excited to try this mode when it was when it was showed up back in Call of Duty next. I was really looking forward to trying out this mode because, you know, it was an extraction shooter. Like it was gonna be an extraction shooter, like Escape from Tarkov, but but with the but with a Call of Duty spin on. So you were you were gonna go in, you were gonna go like so you like my reason, like, my reason of thoughts, and a lot of people thought this that there was gonna be that you were, you were gonna like find a camo somewhere in the map. You put in your backpack, extract the camo, and now you got that camo, that that DMZ exclusive camo that you can use on any gun in Modern Warfare 2. That would have been cool. But instead, that's not how DMZ works. There are no camos to unlock in, my, in DMZ. There are no camos to unlock. You can level up your weapons, and I think DMZ is the best way to level up weapons in Modern Warfare 2 if you're going for Orion. I would say get in the DMZ, level up your guns, and then head to shipment. Head, then head to shipment for easy gold for easy gold and then if you want to do if you want to do long shots good luck all i'm gonna tell you all i'm gonna say is just good luck but uh dmz has like four maps building 21 almajra Vondo, and then ashika now ashika was a map that i thoroughly like, i did i didn't care that much for ashika but after playing it a bit i like ashika i, I like how I like how the map. I like how the map flows. I like how it looks. It's Japanese theme. Vondo is. I just don't have no feelings for Vondo. I don't care that. It's like I don't. It's like I don't hate it. I don't care that much for it. And the Builder Twenty One. Builder Twenty One. I just. I just want to get in there. I just want to explore it. But I. But I can only find one key. Well, funny enough. If funny enough, some buy stations do have a Builder Twenty One key there. I could probably go in the DMZ one day and stock up on those building. I could probably go in the DMZ one day and stock up on those building toy my keys. But as of season four, they added the Koshe complex, and that's really all I've been wanting to do with the Koshe complex complex on Majra to unlock an exclusive blueprint called the Heated Madness. It's one of the coolest looking blueprints in all of Modern Warfare 2. It's one of the coolest blueprints in all of Modern Warfare. It's one of the coolest blueprints. And it's in DMZ. And the only way you can get it is if you go into the complex, find each individual attachment, like the optic, the magazine, the muzzle, the grip. Extract it. You have you have you have to get out. You have to extract with it. If you die with it, you do not have it. You have to go back in. And some and some of those uh attachments are locked behind we'll call we'll call them side quests. We'll call that call that. Like for the for the magazine, the for the magazine and the grip for the magazine barrel and optic it's as simple as going to a particular spot in the complex and picking it up and then you extract it for the muzzle and the grip you have to go they, there are you there are some prerequisites you have to you have to you have to follow before getting those and that and i'm literally just missing i'm literally just missing the muzzle and the grip i'm missing the muzzle i'm missing the grip that's all i'm missing to to, to complete to complete the heated madness, I get that. I'll probably just run that with with no cameras, of course. But again, I got uh, I went on a really, 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 really long tangent here, so we're gonna drop. We're gonna quickly move on. DMZ was a mode. Was it was a mode that I that I enjoyed. It was how I is what I primarily played during Modern Warfare 2 before shipment, and then when shipment came, that's what I probably that's what I switched to. Speaking of shipment, Rich. Finally roll over into the multiplayer side of Modern Warfare 2, shall we? Okay, so for the multiplayer, what you're watching right now, gameplay, two gameplays on shipment, both are wins with me getting the final kill. Not that anyone really matters. Not that it really matters. How like what I said back in the beta still kind of stands right now. Modern Warfare 2 Modern Warfare 2's multiplayer, it just something about it just doesn't feel right. Like it doesn't feel like, I'm playing a Call of Duty game. Like, I'm playing a Call of Duty game. I'm playing a first-person shooter where I where I have a gun, 
I can ADS down sight, I'm in first person, I shoot bullets from my gun, if they connect on the enemy, I drop them in a certain amount of shots. Right? But it, this game doesn't feel like a Call of Duty game. It feels, this game feels forced. Like this game, like like I said before, I don't think this game should have come. I, I Like I said last, like I said back during my Vanguard review, I did not, I said that I didn't want to, I didn't want a game, any more games to come out for the year, right? I didn't want a game to come out in 2022. I didn't want a game to come out in 2023. I didn't want those. But, you know, Activision got to get that cash somehow. You know, Activision's got, Activision's got to get that cash somehow. Got to make that money somehow. So, here we are now. So, here we are. Now, Remember, I said that Modern Warfare. I said that I said that the Modern Warfare Two event is gonna happen. The Modern Warfare Three is happening this November. Do you, I don't. You know, while I don't think it should, it is. But once again, I'm getting off topic here. So, how does the movement for the Modern Warfare Two? It's slow. Every attachment in this game is designed to slow. Is designed to slow you down. Whether it's at whether it's as simple as like slowing down your sprint to fire speed, slowing down your sprint speed, slowing down your hip movement speed, your movement speed in general, the game is designed to be slower with one reason in mind. To cater to casual. You know, low skill players that camp in a corner with a shotgun and bunt and they like a trip mine, maybe like a proximity mine or a claymore. Those players, you know, lower skill players you know, that aren't very good. And like average skill players like and like average skill players like me, I'm being caught to be punished for playing good. Why? Well, skill based matchmaking, which is a which has been a which has been a thorn in everybody's side. Like in every competitive shooter, skill based matchmaking is um is guaranteed to be a thing. Modern Warfare 3's skill based matchmaking is gonna probably be worse than Modern Warfare 2's. Modern Warfare 2's skill based matchmaking, you could feel it. Like one game, you're stomp one game, you're stomping on a team, you're dropping streaks. Having fun playing Call of Duty the way it's meant to be played by dropping streets and having fun, getting tons of kills, and again having fun. Notice I'm saying the word fun over and over because that's the whole point of a video game is to have fun. But Modern Warfare 2, Infinity War doesn't want you having fun. They just want you on the game to play it, right? They want you on the game just to play it. They don't want you having fun. So your base matchmaking is put in effect for the lower skill players who are again. Skill based matchmaking is a thing for where it protects lower skill players, right? You know, that dad that just got out, you know, that dad that just got off work. You know, he, you know, he's been lifting bricks all day. He's tired. He wants to crack open a cold one with the boys and just relax. And the last thing he wants to do is hop into a game of TDM and get sweated on by a dude jump shotting and slide, slide canceling and drop shotting on every single corner, right? He doesn't want to deal with that. So skill based matchmaking is gonna put them in a nice easy lobby. Whereas that whereas that player that likes to drop shot and jump around every corner, he's gonna be put into a higher lobby. And an average Joe like myself who has a good game every now and then on shipment drop at 50, maybe I'll drop like 70, 80, maybe. I dropped 100 kills once. Skill based matchmaking kicked up to the moon. That was a miserable time. But yeah, skill based matchmaking, a lot of people believe a lot of people say that skill based matchmaking ruined Call of Duty and uh I'm inclined to agree. While some people, while some people argue that Modern Warfare 2 isn't is like is it as bad as, as it is, and that you, and people just didn't give it a chance, I disagree. Look, getting off topic here. Let's go on to the maps. The maps, aside from shipment, are bad, badly, are terribly designed. Like again, Modern Warfare Modern Warfare 19's maps were just as bad, if not worse. And how, and like, again, Infinity Ward had three years to work on this game. Three years. And you mean to tell me that they couldn't produce better maps than this? With Shipment being a DLC map released a little ways into Season 1. You mean to tell me that you guys couldn't do better than that? That sucks. Well, that kind of wraps up my review. Modern Warfare 2 was a disappointment. It flopped terribly, and... I'm not as I'm not optimistic for Modern Warfare 3 outside of the outside of the campaign. So there we are. Thank, thank you for watching this video. Sorry if I took up too much time rambling. This was just something I decided to put together at the last minute. But thank you guys for watching. See you guys in the next video. Peace.